Steve, you know I homeschool my kids. So the idea of training young and older people for mission is really exciting for me. Tell me more about what you're thinking. Well, I'm a teacher by profession, so I know how to teach different subjects, test them and ensure that they learn and understand what was presented. But I find it very interesting and wonderful the way that God prepares and trains us for our mission. Right. He has ways that we do not understand many times, but we can see several examples in the Bible of how important it is to raise our children in God's paths, to follow His methods, and to help them learn the scriptures from their earliest years. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Exactly. In the book Education, Ellen White says that God's purpose for our children is wider and deeper and higher than our restricted vision can comprehend. We can see this in the case of Daniel. He came from a very humble home, but God called him to witness in the highest places of the earth because he was faithful. Evidently, he was well-trained by his parents. How? By studying God's word, his works, and learning the lessons of faithful service. And many young people that grew up as Daniel did will be called to be witnesses for God in assemblies, courts, and halls of justice. We can also learn from David. God prepared him for mission in a way we could have never imagined. He was a shepherd taking care of his father's lambs. And at the age of 17, he was anointed to be king. But it was 13 years before he sat on the throne. Now that is a long gap. It is a long gap. In fact, David had no idea how long and tough that transition time would be. However, it is during those hard wilderness years that he learned how to handle a crisis and how to love his enemies. And he received lessons about honor and authority and justice and how to truly rely on God under all circumstances. And that training process was exactly what made David so great during his 40-year reign. God trained him from his early years as a shepherd to be such an extraordinary leader and a king. Look what Ellen White wrote in the book, Education, page 262. Multitudes will be called to a wider ministry. The whole world is opening to the gospel. Ethiopia is stretching out her hands unto God. From Japan and China and India, from the still darkened lands of our own continent, from every quarter of this world of ours comes the cry of sin-stricken hearts for a knowledge of the God of love. Millions upon millions have never so much as heard of God or of His love revealed in Christ. It is their right to receive this knowledge. They have an equal claim with us in the Savior's mercy, and it rests with us who have received the knowledge with our children to whom we may impart it to answer their cry. There is a great need around us. That's why from Outpost Centers International, we're committed to helping train people for mission and to partner with individuals that want to answer the cry. As we see in the Bible, God doesn't call only the qualified, but He qualifies the called. We just need to be willing. That's right, Steve. That was the case with Esther as well. We can tell that she had a good education at home before meeting the king. She was firm in her principles and her beliefs. When the crisis arose, she did not remain silent. She recognized her time and fulfilled her calling. She boldly embraced the moment for which she was born. And in the same way, God calls us to recognize our moment and to live for His kingdom and people. God wants us to accomplish our purpose, and He wants to prepare us for our mission. I invite you to pray and to let God act in your life. While you do, please reflect on this final quote. To every household and every school, to every parent, teacher, and child upon whom has shown the light of the gospel comes at this crisis the question put to Esther, the queen, at that momentous crisis, 
in Israel's history. Who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Have you ever tried to achieve a goal, like maybe having a consistent schedule or exercising regularly? I don't know for you, but I know for me, it can be difficult if I don't have accountability. If someone else doesn't know that goal and either do it with me, like a partner, or hold me accountable to ask me about it. The same thing is true in leadership in your ministry. Accountability matters. Now, leadership is not micromanagement, though. It's not dictating everything that someone does. But it is having what we call freedom within a framework. Your strategic plan is actually what provides that framework. It is the vision, the mission, the goals, and also the values that dictate what we're going to do. But once we have set some goals and we've decided what we're going to do, there's a place to hold ourselves accountable. So if our team works with us, it's okay to meet with them and say, hey, how's it going on this? What can I help you with? Where are we at on these goals? This drives us forward. Meeting regularly matters. But even as a leader, we have to have accountability too. So I encourage you, think about maybe securing a mentor or other ministry leaders that you can meet with and hold each other accountable. This strives to go forward. It helps us to think about what are we doing, why are we doing it, and how do we help each other meet those goals. It's also important to have evaluations. I like to do what's called 360 degree evaluations. This means that not only do I evaluate my team members constructively, but I let them evaluate me as well. That way we're both giving feedback to each other. We want this to be in the spirit of Christ. We're not here as harsh taskmasters, but we are all achieving a common goal together. So as we hold each other accountable, we make each other better. We drive each other forward and we achieve more towards our mission. If you know what God wants you to do, then you cannot fail. However, succeeding in raising a ministry demands knowledge and talent supplemented by godly counsel based on practical experience. Start Right will provide the impetus needed to make an informed start. Therefore, be diligent to present yourself approved to God. A worker who does not need to be ashamed. You cannot but succeed. Download it now. Today's story comes from Farm Stew International in Uganda. Uganda's population is approximately 46 million people. It is estimated that 45% of the population's religion is Protestant, but only 1.7% are Seventh-day Adventists. Farm Stew is designed to equip the world's most vulnerable families with the skills to prevent hunger, disease, and poverty. Its teams are comprised of African Adventist Christian trainers and are based in Uganda, Zimbabwe, and refugee camps for South Sudanese. The ministry's goal is for mothers and fathers to develop the capacity to transform their families' lives and communities, offering a hopeful witness to the world that points to the true source of abundant life, Jesus. Now let's watch what they have to share. My childhood was not so easy because I grew up as an orphan. Uh, my dad uh, died when I was only eight, and my mom died when I was nine. Then life was not good at all. I had no any choice but to go and stay with my aunt. But staying with my aunt, I went through uh, a horrible life. Eating was a, a big problem to me because they couldn't, they were not treating me like a human being. If I don't finish that work, then I'm not going to eat. Even education was hard because they, I would be the last one to be paid school fees. I was not having any hope of surviving because every time 
it was just like mercy of uh, uh, my aunt to for me to get food. So whenever she was so annoyed, it meant that I'm not go I'm going to sleep hungry. I didn't have energy for doing anything until when my brother came and rescued me, and there is where I started like uh, feeling a bit healthier. So it was just mercy of God for me to survive and to be here. I got a chance of going to a university to learn IT. Got some money from my brother and I bought a computer. After buying that computer, I tried to call people to train them. And many people were interested in, in learning computer. There, slowly by slowly, I started adding more computers. And afterwards, I started a full internet cafe. Uh, like three years ago, when I was still working in my cafe, is when I met Joy, the founder of Farms to Uganda. And after meeting, uh, she told me about her idea of starting an organization of Farms to Uganda. And when I flashed back my life, which was not easy at all, and uh, there was another opportunity of going to serve people like how I, I, I grew up and I knew exactly what those people are going through, I decided and I said, yes, I'll be, I'll be there to serve. Farm Shu has helped me a lot. Emotionally, I was like fearing everybody. Since I went through a hardship of like being mistreated, I was thinking that everybody is like that. And I used to isolate myself from people. I used to be, to stay somewhere alone, quietly there. But when I started working with Farm Sue, and I started having many people, training many people, I get that self-esteem. And I started like opening myself to people. And exactly the way I th went through my life is what those people whom we train are going through. There's so many people whom we gave vegetable gardens. They had nothing to eat, but after giving them, every day they have something to eat and the surplus they sell, which is also has improved on their life. That problem of hunger, it is reducing among the people whom we have trained. I'm really so grateful for the Ministry of Farm Sioux for giving the people in the village another chance to live a happy and better life and also to know more about God. Edward's life is completely changed because of this wonderful ministry. And everything started with one lady who answered yes to God's call and started a ministry. You can do the same. You can learn from Daniel, from David, or from Esther and say yes to the Lord. Your training process may be difficult, but I assure you that it will be well worth it. As we work with God to prepare our children for mission, let's determine to follow God's plans and give them a good example of what God expects them to do. Outpost Centers International is eager to partner with you to help light the dark areas of this world and support God's mission.